There is a fifth dimension. A dimension of sound. Damn it, Frank! We tell him to be quiet. I spill my hot cup of Uranus again. A dimension of sight. Hey, Arch. I'm gonna sock you in the puss. A dimension of mind. Nan Adams, is that you? Ah! Ah! Next stop, the Twilight Zone. Uh, what's yeah. going on, everyone? Welcome to the Fifth Dimension of Twilight Zone podcast. I am your host, Nick, as always. Uh, we're back to talk to the Twilight Zones. Uh, Rod Serling's famous uh, gigantic uh, series about big people and little people and all kinds of crazy, crazy things. And uh, yeah, we're going to talk about an episode that is long in the making, guys. Long in the making when it comes to some things, <laughs> I guess you could say. So uh with that said uh we are on audio feeds like audio technica and um i don't know i'm looking around my room last jedi (laughs) and we're on uh i heart uranus cups and stuff like that no we're on uh, anchor and itunes and amazon and google play and all that good stuff but once again we're back to talk season one or season two episode 15 before we actually get into it, uh, how are you guys doing tonight? How are you doing, Triv? How are you doing, Jacob? How is life in the ether that is the internets? <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> I was waiting for the ladies first. So oh. that was the fifth dimension of Twilight. Okay. <laughs> Shush! <laughs> uh, I'm good. Good. We're, we're recording a little bit early or late, depending on how you look at it. Earlier for the episode? Yeah, yeah. We're recording... Night. Yeah, at this point, I've seen like 18 different movies by now. So, and Trev's <laughs> drinking like 16 cups out of that uh, I Heart Uranus cup. So, ideally, um, yeah, that was just yesterday. So, yeah, I didn't see any yeah. movies, but I saw part of a weird movie. But anyway, I'll talk about that on my channel. <laughs> doing well, doing pretty good. Um, a little behind in work, but beyond that, I'm 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 good. How about you guys? I, I'm really. I got to watch this episode today. I've been looking forward to this episode. Yeah, I haven't seen it in twenty, 20 years. years in the bacon. So. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Twenty years in the bacon. Wow. In the bacon. Yeah, yeah, the bacon. Bacon. All I can say is that's a bacon. gigantic Dutch oven. That's that's kind of all I got. <laughs> that sums up the episode Big-ass for spoon me too. Yeah, oh, yeah. Uh, but yeah, uh, everything going good though. Everything working out well for you guys outside of the the normal crazy stuff in life like work and uh chicken coops yeah yeah uh, i do want to say um this episode amongst many of the great things that we'll get into maybe um it brought us quite possibly the greatest sexicon word so far oh yeah it is pretty epic it's fantastic it's sexicon word that word is ah fabulous absolutely absolutely fabulous fabulous. yeah i mean how many how many ah's do you how many h's do you put on that is it the more h's Um, the more of a sexicon word it is or i've got nine on mine okay Um, i I was hoping for at least 17 well i've got a lot of a's and some g's okay okay Um, ah, but um you know it's it's a good uh you know somebody who has it Oh, yeah. <clears throat> you know, somebody who hasn't seen this episode is like, what in the hell are they talking about? You know, I kind of want to make that my ringtone. Together. Yeah, I kind of want to make that my ringtone. Which one? <laughs> that, yeah. Gotcha, gotcha. Yes. And Do I get like uh, 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 some royalties yeah. every time your phone rings? Well, my phone doesn't ring very much. Most of the time it's on vibrate for oh. obvious reasons. <laughs> exactly exactly when in doubt vibrate there you because go because anal yep i mean As i'm surprised you weren't at the crash site the, the truck crash site with all the boxes of uh <laughs> ky jelly and uh dildos that were sprung around everywhere well you know those are for other people i've i've got my own so i don't really need to you know take away from someone else's pleasure Oh, these best bears. No. <laughs> Lots of them. <laughs> <laughs> so if you if you don't know anything about that, that was like two weeks ago as this recording. No, uh <laughs> yeah. So we're recording like super early. Um I we were supposed to have a guest on tonight, but unfortunately, because of the powers that be and the state of things, uh it just wasn't able to work out very well. So I figured, you know, this is an episode that we have been kind of 
hinting at as being contentious for like i don't know over a year now at this point uh but i i don't know how contentious it'll be we'll find out but of course that episode is the uh pretty pretty popular episode which is season two <laughs> episode 15 which is called the invaders uh directed by douglas hayes written by richard matheson scored by jerry goldsmith uh production code 173 3646 air date january 27th 1961 uh, this, of course, stars one character and one character only outside of some voice work. And that, of course, one, is Agnes one Moorhead. One actor. There's I was going to say. Characters. <laughs> well, just, yeah, one character actor. Is that better? There, there character you, actor. <laughs> well, I mean, do you count the uh, the 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 uh, the other couple of folks as actors? Because, I mean, there were they were acting. Um, there was like three or four of them. Nee, 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 nee. <laughs> You, um, the puppeteer. No, uh, yeah, the, the other we we do hear some voices in this, and of course, Douglas Hayes voices those characters. So we'll we'll find out later on why that is. Um, but it stars Agnes Moorhead as woman in cabin. I guess you could say, so, woman um, in cabin. So is yeah. her is her actual? If you did like um signing tax documents, she'd be woman. The I dot cabin, cabin woman, yeah, cabin, <laughs> yeah, cabin woman, woman. I who owns a Dutch oven, you know, yeah, with a very large bowl on yep. the oven. So, her shirt is very large, too. <laughs> I find it, I think very we're large. gonna have a difficult time talking about this episode without talking about the thing. True, <laughs> the thing, well, I mean, like a lot of a lot of my notes are she steps on, she hits, she walks back, she, 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 she. she <laughs> So well, sometimes that's the I thing. put the invaders. Yeah, I just think this is going to be a difficult one to talk about without talking about the thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, at least it happens well. relatively. You know, she's busy cutting gigantic vegetables up, but then, <clears throat> you know, eventually we do get into stuff relatively quickly, so... Mm-hmm. no i mean um, like the thing like what's really going on like, oh, yeah, like yeah. why uh certain um why we're not hearing as much as you would i don't know it's just gonna be tough to talk about it but we well, i mean we'll make it to this so we'll make what's the thing well you know well, it works ask... when talking about porn you know you just keep I, to those kinds of thoughts yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. um so i do want to add nick you had mentioned how this episode's like really popular and mm. i've long all leading up to this thing because i haven't watched it until now <clears> or <throat> until earlier today I, I watched it 20 years ago but i haven't watched it again until now but i've long said this is my favorite episode from what i remember but you know yeah opinions change and all that i don't back in the day when i was like talking about this episode or trying to talk to people about it nobody knew what the hell i was talking about but then you were telling me like a few weeks back you're saying yeah this is apparently like a really popular episode is that a more recent like recent as far as maybe the last decade thing or is has it always been popular maybe i just talked to some not cool people <laughs> both i don't know um I, it's one of those episodes that does a lot with little i guess you could say so i think that's what makes it oh, popular absolutely. it is written by richard matheson which actually makes a lot of sense for uh, an episode like this dealing you know, with one person in a really crazy scenario but um was it well received? Uh, of IMDb, it has an eight point one, but that's a modern. Obviously, that's a modern retelling sure. of it. Um, All modern re- reviews. And yeah, I mean, even if it goes back fifteen years, you're still. Uh, I was gonna look through the uh, thing quick and see if anything comes up in that respect. <clears throat> I, don't know. I just wondered if, it was, if its popularity was more recent <laughs> or if it had always just been really popular. And it is Rod Sterling's favorite episode culture. from an outside writer. Is that if that counts? Really. Okay, so it, this is my favorite episode that I didn't write. <laughs> <laughs> Which Richard, uh, Richard Matheson is almost like, I mean, I feel like he's written half the episodes from the Twilight Zone up to this point. He writes quite a few of them. Yeah, Some good I mean, ones he too. Write, he's always brought in for the episodes that have to deal with like a couple individuals or a single individual in like a really kind of insane scenario. Um, like single location shots. And yeah, single location stories. Yeah, like I said, he's known for doing I Am Legend and he's the Stir of Echoes, stuff like that, and a Shrinking Man. Um, he's just, he has a way about writing uh, material that deals with like a really insane situational uh, problem and then how this character has to like navigate that problem. For instance, I Am Legend is about, 
you know, a guy stuck in the middle of a city having to deal with some kind of apocalypse and everything that comes with that. And I think that's just kind of what he does. You know, what dreams may come. He also wrote, which is about a guy Ooh, trying to find his weird. wife in in the afterlife and stuff like that. So such a trippy but movie. Just looking yeah. through the companion here, it says that Matheson never really liked this episode. Really? Apparently. I do not like it today. For one thing, I think it's incredibly slow moving. My script had twice as much incident as they used in the final cut. It moved like a shot. The teaser alone of a woman cutting vegetables and then hearing the noise, it seems like it takes her forever to get up to the roof. Also, I thought those really? roly-poly dolls were ridiculous looking. The way okay. I wrote it... We'll get into really, that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the way you wrote it, what? The way, uh, the way I had written it, you only catch very quick views of them and nothing ever is clear. To see the things yeah, waddling like across that. the floor is about as frightening as Peter Rabbit coming at you. I will give him that, you know. and I, I was going to comment on them, but yeah, I think that would have been actually if I did have, I guess, a complaint or suggestion keep them a little bit more uh in the shadows yeah i think that would have worked better i mean i think they did they and obviously because because of what they are like the size of them and stuff you do get the idea that um they obviously you can't see a lot of them just because like the way that they're shadowed you'd see Mm -hmm. like the people operating them if you didn't have that but well i think like if not keep them in shadow like like if it's like they turn and you just like say like running around or like running you know like you never get like a full-on glimpse of it until maybe closer to the end i think that would have added to the horror aspects of it which this does jump into at some point very much actually richard, richard Matheson. so richard Matheson wrote the uh once upon a time the one with buster keaton oh nice yeah which is a really good episode i really enjoy that episode but Triv, I haven't asked you. You've seen this episode, I know, a billion times. What is your overall feel about this episode? Even though Richard Matheson apparently hates it, what do you think of it overall? <laughs> well, I don't think like, he hates I mean, it. Going... I think it just. I think he just. You know. I mean, it sounds like he didn't like the changes they made. Right, and that's yeah, and that's understandable from any writer perspective. I'm sure. I mean, it's. I. I it's been, like, years since I've seen this episode, so I had to some ways forgotten about a good chunk of it like i remembered it as the episode that you never hear her speak but beyond that i kind of had forgotten about the rest of it and it is i mean agnes moorhead is just amazing in this like one of the trivia things i read was as a kid she studied with um like a super famous mind by mine by the name of marcel marcel or marcel uh, marcel marcel yeah Um, yeah, very famous yep yeah, he Damn. was known. He never spoke. Like his, his only very creative. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, his his only line ever spoken on camera was in a movie called Silent Movie done by uh, Mel Brooks. Otherwise, he always was pantomime. That's funny. Yeah. That's funny. Right. <laughs> oh, yeah, and it's a great funny. it's a it's a great movie if you ever get the chance. Oh yeah, um, I've seen the movie. Oh, it's awesome. Um, and it, but yeah, so I mean, being that she re- did it that way and. And this is kind of an, a tangent, but um, I know one of the things that often comes across for people that don't, and I know that's not the case here, but for people that are deaf and dumb on camera, which is not the case with Agnes Moorhead, but um, like, you know, they say that they never make any noise. Like you, they don't scream, they don't grunt, they don't, you know, gasp, nothing. And she makes really good use of, of natural things that we do, you know, things that are... Yeah. Uh, incidentally you know a gasp well, or a you know it makes sense and we'll get into it. that's what i was talking about it's hard to talk about it it makes sense while she doesn't talk because she's alone well she's the only human being in the in the episode so there's no she's one the to only talk one we to. see yeah exactly yeah there's no one to talk to so i mean you, i mean i can't say me i talk to myself all the time but i think plenty of people that are sitting there for 24 minutes by themselves in their house probably might have like a long silence with no words so i thought and we'll get into because a lot of so much about this episode depends on the end (laughs) and what we find out uh as far as like talking points which when we get there that's when like i feel like the uh the floodgates are going to open up on a lot of things about this episode because once you have that thing that reveal in the end it's like and now this and that and this and it does yeah, change your perceptions of what this episode is because up till that point not that it's a kooky weird twilight zone episode like last week's 
but mm. it, it do kind of look at it with a lot of what goes on and it is incidentally a little bit humorous like just with some of the things that happen but then you get the the larger scope of what's going on and it does make oh. you kind of go wow that's that's it's a whole different experience on a rewatch yeah. oh absolutely absolutely but i can't um, say that from a first time watch without spoiling anything <clears throat> for our listeners and viewers first time watching it the the no speaking thing i didn't even re- i didn't even notice it like now i can't help but not because you know it ties into the end but well, the first time watching it, I didn't even notice she never spoke because she makes noises because she is. She's alone. And the way that they frame everything and how I'm surprised Matheson said it was so slow paced. Yes. In the very beginning, that first shot, which we'll get into, it takes a minute and it just kind of shows her doing her thing. But then once it starts going, it just goes and it, it doesn't stop. It doesn't really slow down from once once the she has her discovery it just never it, it seemed natural well that is natural it's a 1960s tv show of the twilight zone so you know you got to take the way performances are but i thought she did a fantastic job oh, yeah. and i never really noticed holy shit until the end when it is put in your face i was like oh shit she never she never did speak she never spoke once she made noises and stuff but i was never i always knew what she was thinking <laughs> <laughs> Well, but, and, yeah, and I everything. They did a great job with it. Oh yeah, and they they utilize the space like they used every part of that set. You yeah, know the yeah. way you the way you would, and yeah, they they did it really well. All I'm gonna say is that uh, like the hatch that goes up to her roof, man. Mm-hmm. I hope it never rains there because can you imagine how much rain <laughs> that would come through that? And maybe she got some like insulation or something. I don't know. True. You know. <laughs> yeah. True. Some like a rubber grommet seal or something. I don't know. <laughs> It's like a log um, cabin, so yeah, <laughs> yeah. A lot of this episode actually feels. I, you guys don't make fun of me, but it feels a little bit like um, Monsters Are Doing Maple Street a little bit about how there are like misconceptions in uh, the oh, idea sure. of these oh, yeah. of these characters and the other characters and like how that plays out in the end. Like if it didn't play like it did in the end, it would have a whole different, like you said, Jacob, a whole different meaning. But it was I claustrophobic think... as well. Like it felt. Mm. You even though the obviously the cabin was very small, and I got that same feeling with Maple Street. It it did feel like even when it was set on an entire block, it did feel incredibly claustrophobic. Yeah, because the paranoia is very prevalent in the '60s, as we're all aware. It was a uh, Cold, Cold War, War and all that stuff. Cuban Missile you Crisis. Know, mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. I think that's what this episode actually has a little bit because a lot of well i mean richard matheson stuff deals with like uh scares and cold wars and stuff like that like the the nature of that kind of that idea and ideology and um that's a big thing back then paranoia and and what we do how how mm-hmm. it can like guide our our uh, decisions and stuff like that i mean back then everybody was paranoid that the ruskies were about to attack and all this and yeah. that and yeah, it was just everybody was on edge at all times. So <laughs> yeah, exactly. Definitely bled over into the writings of the time. But I have to ask you guys before we get to the start of the episode, which actually starts the opening narration. Do you mm-hmm. think it was smart to just have one character, or do you think they should have had more characters? Like, even if it was just a character that pops up for like a few seconds, do you think it was just smart to have one no. single character play the whole movie or the whole episode? It wouldn't have worked. No, it, it wouldn't have had the same impact in the end because mm-hmm. I don't. I'm at, it would have seemed all for me once again it's hard to talk about it without the thing but yeah had another character showed up but they stayed with that same you know the talking thing and there just was no dialogue between them i think it would have put more of a a a spotlight on it and made you say Mm. well that's weird why why are they or why is she not talking to this person why are they not talking to her um no didn't need another person or another human yeah this episode also is kind of cool because it actually uses a lot with a little um so i'm assuming one of the robot was the same robot using like almost every scene they may have had like two props but you can tell like two props and then they may use some lights and may use some like whistles in some places that make noises and stuff like that <laughs> but yeah it's it's really like it's, it's a really like um what's that word called toned down utilitarian or... yeah it's utilitarian. yeah utilitarian yeah, yeah, well, um, the thing. like like most of the like a lot of the other episodes for Twilight Zone, um, this one uses um a spacecraft from Forbidden Planet. Really? Yeah, I didn't know that. Yeah, they it's like the same... to borrow a lot of props. Well, and it was you know it's all done by the same company. I'm sure at that point they're like, well, why you know you know why reuse a new or a different one when you can just use this? 
And I mean, that is consistency and not that, not that uh, being an anthology, obviously it's, it's not like it's all set in the same kind of like cinematic universe type of thing, but it does add some synchronicity for how they're portraying spaceships to look. Sure. Yeah. I mean, it makes yeah. sense. They do that nowadays. They, they reuse props um, within the same studios. Oh, they may yeah. Yeah. change them up a little bit here, there, but they'll take the basic prop and, you know, that makes sense. Oh, and one other thing on the, um, the little things that we're going to run across. They were hand puppets made of foam, which took two hands to operate. The fingers worked the arms and then another one worked the legs. Oh, they're probably, yeah, probably something yeah, like, exactly. like that or, yeah. That's that why sense. they were pudgy. Yeah, they look like, uh, yeah, pudgy dial pudgy dial Daleks. Yeah. Michelin man. <laughs> yeah, Daleks. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, so with that said, um, it opens up on a cabin and then it goes straight okay. into what I think is actually one of the cooler introductions for Rod Serling. He just kind of walks in yes. the frame. He's like, yep. he's an invader in the house, or <laughs> outside the house. She's probably <laughs> looking up. She's like, why well, is there a smoking man outside my fucking house? No wonder why she's well, screaming and yelling. I thought, and I'll get into the, the intro, because it does. The episode starts, and he's just talking, and then yeah. he walks mid-opening or mid-opening uh, narration. He walks on screen, and she's still there, and she's back there doing her thing so he's like part of the scene but he's not there and most even the episode because this is the season when they started having him kind of invade the the Mm. the the set Mm -hmm. if you will typically it either pans away from you know our our central characters have a little setup and then it pans away like maybe over here and you see Rod a web zoom or or yeah or it fades or something like that He's not in frame with them. Usually, I don't think he has so far. I could be wrong, but he it's kinda, usually he's not. He kind of did with um the whole truth, like he, the the shot is in the foreground with folks, and then it it goes over to the where the office is. So it's all part of the same shot, but it does kind of pan yeah. away from the action to him. But it's not like a whip zoom where it's clearly like sure. in the void. It is on the lot <clears throat> as part of it. Well, it is almost yeah. like typically when he comes on camera the world the story freezes the world stops for a second and it goes over here that's what it seems like because it mm-hmm. moves away from them and you know, but this one she it's still she's just sitting there in the background and he's like right here in the foreground and she's like washing her dishes or doing whatever at, at the window i thought that was really cool it, yeah. it, it, it's, it was very unique but anyway um it was very cool and his narration goes and i do want to say that the misdirection starts from the very fucking beginning <laughs> like in his his opening, it starts, but is it opening narration time? Yeah, yeah, go right ahead. Okay, Have here, fun. We go. here we go. Do it. <clears throat> do it. Do it. Do it. Do it. Do it. This is one of the out of the way places, the unvisited places. Bleak, wasted, dying. This is a farmhouse, handmade, crude. A house without electricity or gas. A house untouched by progress. This is the woman who lives in the house. A woman who's been alone for many years. A strong simple woman whose only problem up until this moment has been that of acquiring enough food to eat a woman about to face terror which is even now coming at her from the twilight zone and that terror yeah. does not include the dutch oven no no yeah we, we, let's not. talk about that that is one large ass dutch oven it is <laughs> there that is a witch's brew of smoke coming out of that thing too yeah well, yeah whatever she's cooking over there it looks more like a potion than Stew yeah. or whatever she's making. Away! Away! It's got like the the dry ice, uh, <laughs> like <laughs> fumes coming off of it. It's like the black cauldron or something. Absolutely. Well, and the the site, like just she's obviously one person, and it's the uh, opening narration says that she's alone. Mm. What's she gonna do with all that food? Leftovers, man. Which is not a refrigerator. Fridge. Do you mean unless Man. she's got a cold room in the basement and even then? Back then you just made shit. You just ate what you could and like hope for the best. It it smells all right. It'll be good for a few days. Once you cook, just cook it some more. It'll kill whatever's, you know, dangerous in it. Yeah, that, that that's how that works. She just, probably loves you know, her cannon. Get it out of that temperature danger zone and, and <laughs> heat it up to <laughs> heat it up to it's like, you know, 150, 175. You're good, man. You're good. Remember, remind me never to have lunch at your place. Just I'm saying, a, dude. He I'm makes fresh food. Ship. <laughs> I'm not saying that. It's just if you if, if you come up and go, yeah, I recooked this like for the tenth time. I'm gonna go. Um, I'm just gonna walk back to town. 
you know how many people live in my house food does not last that long <laughs> oh good that's good yeah i can't say the same about that um <laughs> <laughs> so as we've discussed as we've specified as it's been stated until the very end there is no dialogue it's just her making noises her making you know screams of pain and stuff like that and it literally opens ask, up i'm sorry i got i got to interject cuz i said i made the i didn't ask the question i made the assertion earlier or the comment did you can you guys think back to the first time you saw this episode did you realize that she wasn't talking the first time you saw it cuz like after you've seen it you know the thing so it's like that's on your hip, your your brain. Like the first time you saw it, did you realize it right out the gate that oh shit, she didn't say shit because I didn't. I remember having that revelation, being like, oh man. So, Straight um, up, I don't remember. I was like twelve. I, I I remember, but I remember not liking it because of that. I think was my whole thing because you know tw- uh, uh, when you're young, like you know, Trey was just saying she was twelve. I probably watched this when I was like I don't know, 13, 14 years old, and I just remember going, this is kind of boring. <laughs> To be fairly honest, it's not a slow, it's a very slow moving episode, as Richard Matheson states. But really? yeah, I remember just not really enjoying it very much. But that changes as you get older. Slow. Yeah, I didn't think I thought the beginning, the first few minutes are slower, but then like I said, once it starts, once the thing happens, it starts, I feel like it just really goes. But I will say, you know, if she if her knife was that freaking dull, why would you not sharpen that knife before you're sitting there like, oh shit, it's dull? Yeah, you could just exactly. take that knife out back and like sharpen that shit. <laughs> they should have done a whole five she's minutes segment got, of that. Yeah, she's probably got like one of the big grindstones, like a medieval Dude. times. She could like pump it with her leg and like, she could have done a fucking Ash Williams thing, just like the big zoom cuts of like she's like shaving or the shaving with the grindstone. <laughs> so, yes, yeah, yeah. But did you guys get a little bit of the puppet master's feel in this episode? A little bit a little, <laughs> because of oh, the, yeah. the invader. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Just it felt like a little puppet mastery. I'm not, you know, because I when I know that's walked. an older or newer movie, but it's so old basically, now. yeah. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. This is yeah, a little old. Except they did put out a new episode, a new movie, like two years ago or something like that. They, so they put a new puppet master out every few years. <laughs> yeah, exactly. There's as many of those like as there now. are like Amityville movies. Yeah, they got crossovers and everything. Yeah. <laughs> so basically, this episode is a woman. Alone in a house versus a bunch of, you know, as you say, uh, Michelin men Gremlins. characters, yeah, Michelin <laughs> men doughboys. But she, but of course, the setup is she's cooking food, she's doing her namely, namely, uh, normal routine, and then a flying saucer by the sound, uh, appears, which is, like I said, very similar to uh, uh Monsters Do on Maple Street, where the flying saucer just appears at the beginning of the episode. And did you notice how, like, when the flying saucer came in, the, the hum that it had? It like faded from the music and then the music, it cross faded with the music very well. It's like the music's going and then like the fade or the, the hum was like part of the music and then the music went out. It was just very, a, a very fluid, natural thing. And like she was like, what the fuck? <laughs> and she was extremely this. affected by the by the sounds. Like I wondered if it was some supersonic, you know, gent- I mean, not that we get that. It never gets that sure. specific, but like if she's affected by that i get i mean i guess it was supposed to be super loud and like you know they just didn't right. convey that as well because i mean it was a spaceship landing on top of her house so true I, I guess even though it is a smaller ship i guess it was still pretty you know, it's big enough it probably had some type of thruster booster thing i don't know one other fun go. thing too um when, when well I'll, I'll wait till we get to that I, there there's a thing on when the aliens communicate that mm. that is kind of huh from the end no 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 or... no no no. earlier oh. earlier on when we first start okay. seeing him but i'll i'll bring that up when we get there well okay. i mean to, to be honest a lot of this setup and a lot of this beginning stuff is just her kind of investigating what that noise was why is it in her i thought it was an attic but i guess it's the roof if you think about it it was if i wasn't really i wasn't paying attention enough to realize it was the roof is that's my own fault but she um she climbs up the ladder and goes to the roof and there is a flying saucer the size of you know what you would see in like you know in a, a movie with like a miniature it's a very much a miniature like you know that they would film on star wars or something like that or like a 1950s it's still big. sci-fi yeah it's, it's big it's but not it's human like, size well it is yeah, probably yeah. about human size but not when i say that i mean like it's about the size of a person mm-hmm. but not big enough for a person to get in <laughs> it, like right. you said it's like a miniature 
Yeah, I'm just going to say it this way. I, I looked at that and I said, is this a spaceship for ants? It needs to be. <laughs> what is this? <laughs> at least three times bigger. Spaceship for ants? <laughs> That's good. Can you imagine if the spaceship was three times bigger? It's just hanging off the side of the fucking <laughs> of the house and shit. But she like she goes up there and she just kind of like you know how like you, you go over there and you like touch something that just looks weird. She just goes over and steps steps on the, the little the little spaceship thing, and that's when we start hearing like the different robot sounds and stuff like that. And one of the robots is like off in the corner, just kind of slowly trying to move its way up towards her, and uh it makes some noises with this vibrating uh <laughs> I said vibrating dildo, but it's like a vibrating thing. I don't know, arm or whatever. And it causes her a lot of pain, which kind of subsides as the episode moves along about how much pain she's receiving. Well, from that, these, uh... That's the question I had. W- were they shooting her? Was that supposed to be like a laser beam? I think it's like radiation, maybe. It's... I don't know. I mean, I, I, I was like, because she, I'm trying to think who, who did, who drew first blood? Was it? She saw them, the, like the one over in the corner, but then like, were they, I don't know. They did their little, and she's like, ah. So I was like, are they shooting her or she's scared? I think she's And later scared. on we find that, but she does have effects from this whatever thing that they're Well, and I wondered if that was maybe like, um, like blisters from the heat of it. Maybe, I don't know. Because, and part of it's that this was 1961 in a TV show that they were borrowing things from other movies and stuff. So I'm wondering if the effect was supposed to, they couldn't really afford it, but it was supposed to be that it was shooting something at her, but it was really just this little pin lighting up going. <laughs> so I, I don't um, know. It definitely affected her though. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. Cause they uh... were probes. Yeah. <laughs> well, and when they, when the aliens speak, that's actually Morse code. Oh, cool. Oh, is it? I did not know yeah. that. But it's gibber like gibberish Morse code, like it's literally just a series of letters. There's no it's not like if you can understand this, you are special. Please kiss See, our ass is, or whatever. That would have been cool it, if it did actually have a message in it. <laughs> it's like it gave away the end to, to you know, that would a couple be cool. of people out there that speak Morse code. Well, back <laughs> then a lot of people did though. Like it was pretty common because of World War II. Mm, yeah yeah <laughs> that, they had a lot of like major uh code breakers in world war ii um, well my you, my uncle knew it it was something that was just taught back in the day mm-hmm. so do you think it said drink your oval team probably <laughs> don't forget to drink your oval team <laughs> a crummy commercial son of a bitch um <laughs> but no like uh she she is a, she does uh she's apparently very good at bowling because she uh rolls whatever she rolls at it the <laughs> robot just major strike and the robot just falls over um, that was her uh like one of her lanterns and man yeah. she goes through like all of the lighting stuff yeah <laughs> she's like the kevin McAllister. she's just setting up all kinds of shit around the house just in case another invasion happens you know she, but she, i mean she, she, that was yeah that was the candle the one that was hanging up that she pulled off that's what she threw at him and knocked his ass off the side of the house <laughs> yeah uh but you know she goes down to the the she goes back down to because she hears more noises downstairs and she goes down there she knows she has a little weird bump or lesions on her body and you know it's all over like her arms and her kind of chest area her neck area and stuff like that and um you know that a lot of this first act is just kind of her trying to figure out what the fuck is going on because you're sitting there going okay so we've seen that we've seen an invader we've seen a creature whatever this thing is and you know she's trying to fend them off you know at some point she'll you know grab a knife and you know the invader mm-hmm. seemed like actually what i what i said was you know she grabs a boat or because she sees um uh, one of them in like one of her, <laughs> like, like her bedroom spoke. i guess <laughs> yeah yeah you, um so do you, i didn't remember i forgot that they showed the spacecraft so early i remember like that being a revelation at the end like because she goes back i thought that that's when they showed it i forgot they showed it so early do you guys think it would have worked better if they didn't show the spacecraft so early if like maybe she went up there and one of them was just like me and then everything else went the same or do you think that it does it does it take anything away that it shows anything i could see it going one of two ways it's either going to be a okay is this in her head kind of a thing and why is this literally pioneer woman seeing you know what appears to be some kind of gremlin-y space 
space robot thing. thing. <laughs> I mean, I, I don't know that the two correlate if you don't have some kind of a connection to them. Maybe, maybe that's it. I don't know. Yeah, but that, I, mean, I mean, maybe that would have made it even more like, you know, if they kept them more like out of focus or like whenever she would turn, they go, wah, wah, or we didn't get a good look at them. And then right. in the end, you find out what we find out. Maybe that would have added to it. I don't know. I just didn't remember because when she walked up there to the ship, I was like, oh, shit. I forgot that it was this early that they showed it. I thought it wasn't until the end. The other thing to remember, too, is you're dealing with studio studio execs. It could have been something where initially it was very much, you know, more kind of secretive with it. And then they were like, oh, well, you're going to lose people. They're not going to understand what's going on. You have to show the spaceship right away. Or maybe, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, because the the spaceship, I think, allow it, back in the, as we've talked before in the past, the 50s and 60s were very much focused on the space race and aliens and shit. I think what was fucking Roswell, was that in the 40s or 50s or something like that? So this kind of stuff is just very much on people's minds, like invading and, you know, the idea of like aliens and stuff like that. So I guess it makes a lot of sense to have a spaceship in there to give us some, you know, of the of the time. Like today, like, you know, it looks a little goofy and stuff like that. But at the time, it was, you know, very prevalent. Well, that, for... that right there, that kind of brings me to <clears throat> I'm not going to say a complaint about the episode, but I'm going to say mm -hmm. If they remade this episode, it's the, the one reason I would think that this episode could do well is a, with a remake. I don't think everything needs to be remade. Some things are just good the way they are. The effects w in regards to the invaders themselves, especially the puppets that they use, they are just that kind of it almost does elicit a little bit of a laugh when you see him. It's kind of like, <laughs> what is that? So you got to kind of like while watching it, you got to put yourself in the mindset of the 1960s and how what they had to work with especially with a tv show yeah. and just kind of with it because it's there's they're supposed to be scary and they are at times but especially in 2022 we look at this and we're like what the fuck is that <laughs> so you got to kind of roll with it i do think that that's something that a, a remake i wouldn't want to change much but that just make them either have them where you don't see them much you just see like them in you know in your peripheral or something or just have something better looking yeah, because it is kind of they look like toys and it looks like a toy that somebody's operating with you know sticks <laughs> but you know it is that that's the the one drawback to the episode but i can't really say, say it's a fault with the episode because it came out 60 years ago yeah because there, and there's other technical aspects of the episode i thought were fantastic like the lighting oh lighting was excellent they lit the shit out of this episode and like it's all candlelight obviously it's not being lit by a candle but you can see, and you see how they do it. Like when she grabs the candle out of that one room, she goes in the doorway, she grabs the candle, she comes in, and the light in there fades out and it fades into this one. It followed the candle, which seems like a simple thing, but it just knowing the technical side behind it and how seamlessly they did it was awesome. And like the shadows they used and everything of her. And I thought the lighting in the episode was really creative, which is really good. It just, it sold this whole situation, it sold what was going on there. And I thought it was very well done. It's kind of like Eye of the Beholder. You know, the, the story in Eye of the Beholder is not not as simple by any stretch, but it does still kind of follow that, okay, we have this this very, you know, narrow premise. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, how do we how do we stretch that to twenty four minutes? Because even twenty four minutes can be difficult to fill if you have a very, you know, a shit story or very, yeah. you know, such a simple concept that there's no way to fill it. But, you know, by using lighting, by using different angles, by doing all that stuff, they managed to make it a very intriguing episode that holds you in place. Yeah, and it's execution. This yeah. is a situation where the, the story is interesting. Well, the story is, and we'll get in, I'm going to wait till the end when I talk about it specifically, but the story actually does something that I've talked about on this show a bunch of times. It is something, this episode is a thing I've talked about quite a few times, but it does something different to make up for it. But it is fairly simple. It's the execution is just so fucking good. It's just executed beautifully, perfectly. Yeah. Mm. Actually, the if you guys want to know some trivia, this episode is directed by the same director who did direct Eye of the Beholder and ah. uh, The Howling mm. Man. So Nice. Yeah, yeah. Both very yeah, good um, episodes. Both very creative looking episodes. Yeah. And like they they it pushes they push some boundaries with like how they shot things and and misdirection and stuff like that. I would Dutch also Angels. add oh yeah, exactly. I, <laughs> I would also add that and this is 
2022 versus, you know, 1961. But, you know, when I was looking at the little alien dudes, I did sort of get um like echoes of Mad God, like the like the undersea dives. Oh, yeah. Yeah. From that, it kind of had like if you were to remake it and do stop motion on the on the little dudes, that would be creepy as hell. Just that kind of that kind of motion. Well, that's what I'm saying. And, and I'll let Nick take the way here, but there's not a lot story wise because we typically go through the story here. Most well, of the not, episodes, there's not a lot to talk about story wise. Yeah, I'm not interjecting because, like... yeah, the reason I'm not interjecting <laughs> is because there isn't really a lot of story here. We're almost at the act break, which is actually like 13 minutes long, believe it or not. So I'm, I'm letting you guys you know, talk about this episode because I'm actually learning stuff as you guys talk. So, you know, have at yeah. it. You know, more. Yeah, yeah. Don't, well, don't she... think I'm like, yeah there's not a lot to talk about there's a lot of mm. stuff in the the episode and that's very interesting especially when when rewatching it just as far as like giving a synopsis of it there's <laughs> she she runs around the fucking house for the whole episode trying to first survive against these invaders these two invaders and then fight back that's all it is i mean this is there's nothing else to like go through until the end and you, that sounds so basic. And you're like, how do you fill 24 minutes with that? But they did such a damn good job because she just is met with these little obstacles throughout the whole thing. Yeah. And it, it is just, it, it has such a great, and I know that it's odd because even Nick, you and Matheson said it's a slow episode. It is up to a point. Once she goes up there and, you know, the, the little, once the invaders show up and start her, it just, it's nonstop. She's just going the whole time trying to get away from these things or fight back to them or to fight back at them. What is it? To them? At them? I don't know. Fighting back. Both. So it, it moves very fast then. There's lots of, there's always something going on. She's getting attacked. She's attacking. I thought it had a great pace. They did a nice like, little job there in the beginning, a little slower moment to like show this person and how she lives. And then shit hits the fan. That's it. That was fantastically just uh executed all, all around which i know i've already said that but there it is fantastical fantastical yes yeah but really like like i said you know i i called the invaders like little roaches because they're like always able to out like outrun her until they want to strike um and we'll talk about the second act about some of the stuff they do but that's kind of where it leads like one of the lasers one of the one of the lasers one of the robots tries to uh or the, whatever the invader tries to laser her again to give her more bumps i guess and like i said she's like trying to smack them under, <laughs> underneath the bed but like i said the, the what makes the you know when the act break happens what what i start to notice is she would have been very good i don't know if agnes Moorhead how old she was when this episode aired but she seems like a very vaudevillian actress in a lot of respects mm -hmm. like Hell like of a physical she, performance. Yeah, how she expresses with her voice and you know her like you know trivia said this earlier like everything that she does and how she like her face expressions and stuff like that. So I I thought that oh, yeah. was I thought that was pretty cool. Um, it definitely is. She's definitely carrying a lot on her shoulders for not much okay. of stuff going on. So, but that's the act break. That's kind of where it ends. She's you know in the middle of just this terrifying situation that she does nothing about. It's kind of funny because you think she's like she's like the bad like really the bad guy but it's really these people that are the bad guy which leads into some interesting observations about like what their end up end goal is like who's the real bad guy of this whole situation but um jacob i know you really liked what's going on but triv what, what about you like with this act break like where do you feel how do you feel about the first act of the episode uh, yeah I, th I think it was very well done um like i say i kind of I knew roughly what was going to happen, but as mm -hmm. far as like what was coming, I didn't really remember it very well because it's been quite a while. Um, no, I I was I was I was in for it. I was enjoying it, and um, you know, there's always that question if you're watching it and wondering how they're going to fill the time because even no matter how fast the thing goes, you're like, okay, they've they've done this, they've done that. How are they going to you know fill the back half of this? You yeah. know, is it is it going to be a you know three minutes of continuation of this and then Total jump change. into it? Right, exactly. <laughs> or what? What is the? Where is it going to? You know, just just there's always that question. Like, what? You know, is it going to be one twist? Is it going to be a double twist? Is there going to be a twist? You know, that kind of thing. With you know, it was, so it was sort of the back half of it was kind of like watching it again for the first time. Yeah. Well, let, let me it, ask you guys this question. Um, 
if you had never seen this episode before and you're you're at this act break do you have any inkling of like where it's going or do you like are you just like this is cool i guess i mean like what what do you guys feel about like just not really because there's not a, not a lot known there's not honestly a lot given outside of this woman's in this house being attacked by stuff but i i, I don't know how you guys feel about like just kind of it, it almost feels like um is it nonchalant or just kind of laissez-faire with this material is that is that, I, is that right word? i remember i remember vividly how i felt about this episode when i first watched it so I remember what I had no idea where it was going, mm-hmm. like what it was going to do. I may have thought I did at some point, but I know I know this much. I did not know, regardless of what I thought, where it was going to go. And I also I just remember being entranced by what was going on, just kind of like and even looking at these like little corny little robot Michelin men running around. Once again, I was able to look at it and understand And this would have been probably late, late, late 90s, early 2000s when I saw it. I remember thinking is the 60s i get it okay so i'm able to look past that but i just remember everything it, it just it, it held me i was interested to see what's happening what's going on why are these things attacking what is going on what are they what is happening here i was really just interested to see what was going on it is a single location uh story and i really do like those single location stories mm-hmm. ones where they take place all in one spot and it, you get an opportunity to see how creative the filmmakers can be with just one single location. I really enjoy those. So, you know, it, it was already preloaded for me to like it a little bit there. But I remember thinking it was this this was this is great. I was really I was into this. I was I was invested. I was like, what's going on here? Not even thinking that this chick hadn't spoken one damn time, <laughs> which um, there is something I, I do think that she has a voice of, of sorts that I'll talk about right there at the beginning of the second act. But uh, we'll get into that. But Triv, how about you? I I kind of I I guess uh, like I say I kind of was wondering what was going to come next. Uh, I kind of I I know that you guys are kind of seeing it as like oh you know why are they attacking this that the other thing I think you know it's that thing about any horror movie you see like where there's you know not to coin a phrase but there are invaders uh, you know you what you pursue what you presume is an attack. You know, these fucking assholes landed on your roof, you know, and they Little look bastard. weird. There, There's nothing about them that you can recognize as what you are. And you just kind of kick one off the roof because screw them. You know, this is my house, damn it, and I will protect it. You're not going to get my Dutch oven. Um, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And, you know, then they battle back and then, you know, use what you've got to kind of fight them and because it is it's your house it's that it's that thing about this is my house get out of my house stop get off my you know. lawn basically yeah <laughs> no she's not um, like old woman yelling at the clouds by any stretch but you know very very spaced invaders yes well yeah <laughs> um but no but that 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 was that's what makes good like sci-fi and horror is the idea of misconception the idea of like you go in expecting one thing you expect you have this preconceived notion that here is this bad situation here is this thing that is causing so much you know turmoil and stress and heartache and horror and stuff like that and the best stories ever told in horror sci-fi are the exact opposite of what you expect and they go places you don't expect you know it's like um, malignant I talk about that or barbarian. You uh, are going with like this perceived notion. No, uh, no, no, go with me. You go with this perceived notion like you do in the invaders. And by the end of the movie, it's not at all what you were expecting. And I think that's the I art agree. of great storytelling. So like I guess that Richard, so. that's like what, with the wig. yeah. Like I mean, look at, look at, I had a yeah, perceived notion that it was going to be good and it wasn't. Trish is going to invade this and smack you and shit. <laughs> no, I'm uh, just going to say no because you're wrong. <laughs> oh oh have you Those... left comments on my video no <laughs> it's not my that's, that's what not everybody how I... else said you're not that's not how i roll in the slightest you have every right um... not to like it but it's right up my alley so uh, no. but no well, the other thing uh i keep going back to i am legend that's the same thing you have this preconceived notion that this guy robert neville or whatever his character name is he is out there trying to find a cure but the cure he's trying to find with the, the vampires or whatever the hell they are it, it, it there's more layers to it than you realize and the they same thing here cure. like what's that he's the they don't want a cure he's the bad guy that was well the that's big, my point like, like you think he's the good guy you think he's the one that is the 
you know are in pro- protagonist but then as we see with the the vampire creatures they just are humanistic i mean even though they're weird and creepy and stuff like that it's just I don't know. I like that. They're their so own thing. They don't yeah. they don't want to be changed into this, you know, or well, I guess technically back into these human beings. They're happy with who they are. They just want to be left the hell alone. Give me my woman back with the vampire. And we're talking about a totally different movie now. <laughs> yeah, speaking of speaking of pre- uh, yeah, the, preconceived the, notions, Trev's going. Yeah. Oh yeah. sorry. <laughs> no, it's all good. I'm just I'm just joking. But yeah, coming back from the act break, it's more of the same stuff. It's more of like you know, she she's going more on the offensive. She grabs a knight or an axe and uh, Jacob agree. raises his hand like he's in school. I disagree. I think the second What's... act is different. I think the second like, act has a tonal change. And that's how they, because Triv made a great point a minute ago. At the act break, you're like, okay, she's being invaded and you've got these creatures and they're attacking and she's scared. So then how are they going to fill that second half, that back half? Well, the, the way is, because up to this point, it's been kind of just... I don't know how you would classify it. You're, you're just like, you're interested. You're like, what's going on? It's, it's not scary, but there's just interesting things going on. The threat is, um, uh, we're given the threat. We're given the setup. The second act becomes very much horror or, or at least thriller, but I'm, I'm going to go as far as to say horror. It, it goes into horror territory for 1960s television. The whole, the score changes, the, the aggressiveness of these creatures change. The um, up and personal nature of it, like one of them getting the knife, like he's fucking Chucky, changes. The score, I thought, in the second act almost became her voice. I love that score. (laughs) Up to this point, it was fine. It was just background noise. But the score where it has like that Beetlejuice twang going on in the background, I thought really made it creepy and unnerving and added to the whole that vibe they were going for i felt like they were going for in that second half where it became kind of like a now she's on the offensive and they're like where are they they're hiding before it didn't seem like they were as aggressive now they're like aggressively trying to kill her (laughs) (laughs) and busting out a knife and like and it had that kind of like twang thing that is in beetlejuice too um I, i thought that was really well done and that's that's what I meant by like the tone of the change. It does seem like it becomes a horror slasher. She um uh, she actually grabs one of them, puts them in the knapsack, and just starts beating the hot of it. I I, I so actually fun. put yeah, I put that um is that a knife or are you just happy to kill me in your pocket? Yeah. Or are you just happy to kill me? Um, if you think about it, that was a pretty brutal and violent death. Yeah, yeah it was. was. She Jason Voorhees, that motherfucker. <laughs> Beat the <laughs> fuck out <laughs> of him, threw him in a box and put the box in the fire. Jesus. Yeah. You know, we, we too, she, about... she did more damage to her own house than they did. Mm-hmm. So she she's she's invading her own house. She's destroying yeah, it. Yeah, kind of. Um, I mean, and, and you think about and not to say that you wouldn't like react like, you know, kick over a table to get to whatever the thing was, but like it was above and beyond like she pulled apart her entire bed and like made it up like a sack and then beat it. You know, she had a freaking knife. She could have just gone <laughs> and done the thing with the, the the little guy but she didn't she went hardcore and i don't know well, that like that I, I was just gruesome <laughs> well you know organic. what i mean like then <laughs> yeah. then you know you you see the knife go up and then it goes you know you don't see what happens next <clears throat> but uh, what i'm saying is and i don't know maybe it was just my own perceptions but like in trying to save her own stuff she ended up destroying like her entire environment and i mm-hmm. maybe that's me just Maybe that's me just overanalyzing, but I kind of read into that. No, but like you want to find something out funny, Triv. If you if you think about the ending of this episode and think about that situation of the box and the fire and the robot in the fire, it's quite horrifying. <laughs> it's really yes. it's, it's it's really disturbing. Like, you know, what happens and what this uh this woman does. She's defending herself as she does because there's points where she like tries to open the door and the knife goes through. <laughs> so yeah, that's no, pretty, yeah. She, or the one where she opens the door and the one the little guy's just standing there in the doorway and she goes, yeah. Ah! And then she has just a second where she's like, "What the fuck, you're little," and she just shuts the door on him. <laughs> it is no, she like bet. loses her shit and then it's like six inches tall. You know, and that and seems like it. it's kind of a realization too of the <clears> fact that <throat> even if they've got like weapons and stuff. She's still quite a lot larger. Like dis- yeah. defining for those that haven't seen it and are watching this, hopefully you've seen it. But like those little guys, 
they're what maybe a foot tall compared if to her? that they're probably six yeah. to eight inches they look like a gi joe figurine from like back in the day yeah they were like yeah they're, um, they're not even as tall as a barbie yeah, which is which actually, if you if you remember Gulliver's Travels at all, it's the same type of thing where the Gulliver character is like traveling and comes across those little um, tiny people and they're like trying to like shoot arrows at and stuff like that. But the thing that's also funny is that poor clock. The clock scares her and she just throws it. That's like the biggest uh, travesty of the whole episode. Is she loses a clock, poor woman in yeah. her clock. She she threw that clock like that one guy in that episode who hated all his electronics. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Maybe they should find each other, get get married. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> could be quite a uh, quite an interesting relationship. Yeah, <laughs> he's um, like some haughty toddy uh, food critic, and she's going. Ah! Well, well, that and considering the the difference in height. Yeah, right, right. Yeah. <laughs> hey, we we'll get there. And one of the one of the robots uh, blows a hole in the side of her door. And then it's just she's like waiting for it, and all of a sudden we just see lights, and it, I think it's like it moving back Witch and forth. Project with the spit, <laughs> yeah. instead of snot, she's got that spit. Just she's yeah. like rabbit. It's like rabbit all of a sudden. Like I'm gonna fucking kill you. Oh yeah, she totally is. I, I will also add, maybe we kind of touched on it, but I I laughed out loud, and I didn't mean to. I genuinely didn't mean to. But when she's trying to, because the door, like you lift it up, like lift up the latch uh, and open it that way. And there's like a hole in the, in the thing. And like the knife comes through and she's like grabbing it. Like, I don't know why, but just like, I found that so funny. Like, here's this blade that comes through. And yeah, I don't know. That, I well, laughed. she also, because it was the sixties, it was, I think it was supposed to be blood, but there was no blood. <laughs> she was like, it was, uh, ah, it was it's like when syrup. cowboys got, it's like when cowboys got shot, they'd be like, <laughs> yep. and just fall over. And it's like, <laughs> it's nothing. But it was the 60s, so, you know. Yeah. I do have to ask a question, though. All this is going on, this whole <clears throat> horrific situation. I mean, she is, these are some little things coming after her. And, you know, they got laser guns or something, shooting something at her. They're affecting her. They're clearly terrorizing her. Why didn't she just leave? Because <laughs> it was her house. It I was guess her... that's it. She's fighting for her house. But, you know, at some point, it's like, just leave and come back with something. I don't know, but. If she's Dustin in the Home middle Alone. of nowhere. I mean, if she's if she's in the middle of nowhere, though. True, I guess. Yeah, I mean, I mean, it's you know, cool. it, I didn't really think that while watching the episode the first time, but the second time, kind of critiquing it, I was like, just leave. <laughs> just have you not leave. seen the uh, not seen Home Alone? She's like, this is my house, and I have to defend it. As she put starts putting down traps and shit. Um, yeah. she's like uh, <laughs> Jigsaw. Exactly. So we're going to get to the end of the episode here because there's not, that's pretty much like the entire episode is just her kind of fending off these little tiny, whatever they are. And she hears noises back up on the roof and she goes up on the roof and she decides she's going to take that ax and destroy the ship. And um, that's when we hear voices. And well, we the ship's hear... already destroyed by that point. Well, or no, it's... I know, but uh, she destroys the ship and we uh, all of a sudden hear human voices and it's a distress call. Well, we're hearing human voices. We're hearing English. So, Mission control. Yeah, mm-hmm. what the hell is going on? And then we hear the words giant humanoids. And at first, I'm like, w- when I f- remember first seeing this, I'm like, wait, what? And then it pans over, and it's a U.S. Air Force space probe. Mm-hmm. And uh, it basically... Well, that? and it was a, that was the precursor to NASA. Yeah, exactly. It's, you know, because NASA is it's it's a thing but it's not really a thing at this point but it's basically revealed that the tiny invaders are us and this woman is a gigantic gigantor it's um <laughs> she's like a 50 foot woman a yeah only she's not dancing like uh right she's not dancing around <laughs> like uh you know ronnie howard back when he was a kid this is actually like a complete opposite of like the 50 foot woman or something like that, where it literally shows from her point of view. And that's where we come into the whole misconception of what is going on. Basically the tiny invaders are humans who either had some kind of mission to take down this woman or have had bad, you know, things happen to them on this planet. Exploration mission. Yeah, basically. Yeah. But they're they're like, no, don't come, don't come here. (laughs) Just stop. (laughs) Well, that, and that there's what I was getting at earlier, the attack, Uh like, who who drew first blood i can't remember but i can say and if she did because she she did throw that candle at it but i can't remember if it shot her yet and if it was even shooting her i don't know maybe they were scared they're like ah 
money, 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 and then she threw something. So I, it is just a big misunderstanding. Or I mean, maybe she would have wanted to kill him anyway. But it is there. I'm going to assume they didn't want to. They didn't come there to cause harm. But then you know, shit happened, and you know, she didn't understand. They didn't understand. So they're just all fighting for their own lives. But there is a point in this episode where these little the uh, the humans, the robot looking things. They are kind of terrorizing this lady. I mean, I get that maybe the one that was in the house is trying to get out. And maybe that's why he's doing it and he feels threatened. But the one outside is just kind of terrorizing her. Maybe he's trying to get in and get the other one. I don't know. But and, and to get his, his comrade out. But it's kind of hard to say who was the bad guy here. Because it all is almost like all of a sudden, oh, she's the bad guy. But is she? Because it is her house and they invaded it. So that's kind of how I saw it. Like it was like you said, it was a massive misunderstanding and because they didn't understand each other and she's not to say i hate to say simple because you know if you were out in the middle of nowhere all by yourself i mean i think you would be more on edge just because of you know you're out in the middle of nowhere all by yourself but well, she is very frontier time as far as like our yeah. history goes she's very you know little house on the prairie and they're like in a fucking spaceship so right. yeah. terribly speaking she is maybe not in mine but just like and what she knows, she is simple compared to them. I mean, it 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 reminds me of every <laughs> short of like the day that the world stood stood still. It's like every B movie of that era. Like you know, mm -hmm. aliens attack. You know, there's no rhyme or reason to any of it. They land. You know, people jump into action because they perceive this thing that they don't understand as a threat. And that is okay. every that is a good chunk of B movies of that era. So from that perspective, this is very not it's not typical in what it is but oh, it the, is. the overriding thing if you look at but it, from it that subverts it yes subverts because we are the aliens this time exactly because you automatically do kind of go into story. that oh yeah she's aliens are here and aliens are bad and they're attacking her so she's attacking she's standing up for and then you find out oh fuck they we were the aliens so she's not one of us but she was being attacked yeah whose yeah. side are we on <laughs> <laughs> well that's actually trip brought up a good point with the uh day the earth is still that movie is not even about i mean it's about war and stuff like that about you know the nuclear holocaust and all that good stuff but really gort is not the bad guy in the movie it's the human beings that are the bad people and gore is just mm -hmm. putting them in a place and stuff like that and that's what's happening here it's like this woman is not bad she just was put in a situation and she had to defend herself because she's being you know cut up like i said like the puppet master you know the one with the knife and they're just attacking her and like blowing up her house she's like what the fuck man i'm just trying to make potato soup or some shit in my big ass crock pot you know it's just like or dutch oven it's just like jesus christ what the fuck are you thinking and that's why well, on the flip side one of them he he because you know one of them she knocked him down inside the house so he was just well, trying no. to probably get out of the house yeah <laughs> And well, his friend he was had, trying to get he him had out. like a big knife. <clears throat> well, no, I well, know that. But he did. That may have just been him trying to get out. I mean, we don't know. Because, I mean, what would you do in that situation if you're this normal sized person, this giant comes along and knocks you down inside of its lair? And it's just like, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you're going to shoot. You got like a little gun. You're like, wee, 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 and you're going to okay. do what you got to do to get out. So it's like all of them were just trying to survive. Yeah. Yeah. Not realizing that I'm not wanting, I'm going to assume none of them wanted to attack each other. They just wanted to survive. Oh, here's a good example. Look at the, <clears> look <throat> at the um, Luke in the Wampa or the, the, the Wampa's cave, you know, the Wampa hung him upside down in the ice and was going to eat him. But Luke took off his arm with a lightsaber. Like who in theory there is the bad guy. It's kind of like that. Both just want to survive. Not so, the greatest I, example, but it's the only one I got. No, I get, I got, I got you. Well, I, and I mean, there, there's that. There's just a lot of levels to this thing. Once you see the end, because the ending of this thing is like, holy fuck, that, that changes everything. Oh yeah. And well, what yeah, I, that's why I go back to the box and the fire thing. It's like, oh my god, that is terrifying. That's, that's horrifying. horrifying. Yeah. You're burning a man alive. It's like <laughs> there's After a man you beat, alive. Beat him to death, like his whole body. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Or beat him at least. I don't know if he's dead or not. She beat him. Yeah, it's, it's he, he pretty horrifying. It's brutal. And but generally alluding... speaking, oh, sorry, go ahead. No, go ahead and say. So, I was so. just going to say the damage that they inflict upon her. Obviously, she's, you know, the 117,000 foot tall woman <laughs> compared <laughs> to them. But, you know, the damage that they inflict upon her, like, you know, they, they cut her foot, they cut her hand. What else? They, they did some other things too, I think. They shot but her a bunch. They shot with, her a bunch. Or whatever that they're doing to her. 
right not that it's superficial wounds but compared to what happened to them it was yeah. kind of superficial according but, uh, to what i was alluding to in the beginning about uh, i said i couldn't talk about until we know this this thing this episode has a fucking banger of an ending and there have been some of those in twilight zone up to this point such as the one i always go to is is it what third from the sun i think mm -hmm. yeah which i thought so highly of the, i still do think it's a great episode but i thought very highly of that episode until i started thinking about it and i was like the ending is fantastic in that episode but the rest of the episode and i've said this a bunch of times is not a lot going on the ending makes Whoa. the episode mm -hmm. but that's with what this twilight one, zone when Twilight Zone's at its best, it subverts the expectation of what you mm -hmm. expect. It's like the man, uh, the old man in the mountain, which I think is in season five. You go in thinking it's, it's a like a post-apocalyptic world, yeah, and then it, it completely. Uh, it's like a, it's like a Planet of the Apes or something like that. It's like yeah. you go in with this weird kind of thought-provoking idea of like Earth being taken over by monkeys and stuff like that, and then you realize that it subverts expectations by being. A movie about our demise because of what we cause and shit like that because they see the Statue of Liberty and that's what well, it's doing here. It's just a, that's a great example. Yeah, fantastic ending. Well, so. Fantastic ending. But yeah, the movie was good too. Mm -hmm. It was it had a, everything else, and that's what I thought about this episode. It had a fantastic ending, and I I had to reevaluate episodes such as um the uh, third from the sun because I had to eventually say, well, it had a great ending. But I gotta, I gotta be honest. The rest of the episode was just kind of. Eh. I thought this one had a fantastic ending, and the rest of the episode was interesting and entertaining as well. And then I can't say this about this episode and not Third from the Sun. Third from the Sun. Once you learn the ending, it does not really change the rest of the episode. You watch it, and you're just like, okay, nothing's. It doesn't elevate the rest of the episode. You go back and watch it again, and you're just like, okay. It's, I mean, there's you have that knowledge, so you're kind of mm -hmm. like, okay, I know they're, they're on another planet, but it doesn't really change anything. This one, you go back and watch it again, and it changes shit, and you see things very differently this time around as to when you didn't know. You're looking at it from a different perspective and different eyes, and it's just, this was a great episode with a great ending instead of just a eh, episode with a great ending. So that's one of the big differences with this one, as opposed to some of those other episodes that just have great endings. Absolutely. And also, uh, just a random thing about the old man in the mountain. It also gave us Snoo Snoo. Snoo Snoo. From uh, Futurama. Yeah, I know uh, what you're talking about. Yeah, absolutely. Why, why do I keep making that face? I don't mean to make that face. Are you making your O oh, face again? Oh, 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 oh. No, I'm not oh. meaning to. Hey, no face. You know, oh, oh, oh. that happens to women in my presence sometimes. <laughs> it's just something I've had to live with my whole life. It happens. I'm sorry. I do apologize. Snoo Snoo is for men, like to, for men to suffer, not for women to suffer. I'm not suffer. Yeah, they, they were like suffering face right. when they're around me. That, that is true. <laughs> <laughs> Point taken. Um, so, with that said, um, this episode's good. Like, like just to conclude it, you know, actually we'll get into the closing narration here in a second, but it, I think for as simple as it is, and I think for as, you know, using little props and little ideas, I think this is why Twilight Zone works when it works because they can take such a simpleized idea and premise and just make it so compelling. It doesn't, I'll be honest with you, that ending really helps, but if that if you had an episode like this and it was just woman versus invaders, it actually is a pretty decent episode. It really has a very kind of cool execution to it. And that twist the just gives, that twist is yeah. The, oh yeah. The, the twist is just a cherry on the top of the really good story. And though this I don't think it's like could have been executed terribly and oh, just yeah. well, basic yeah. and simply and just been boring and just it, like nothing because nothing could really have been does the happen. fever. Yeah, it's just her <laughs> drops out well, the window. It's, it's all three. <laughs> it's like, all three of them trying to survive. But all, from yeah. our perspective, it's just her trying to survive a home invasion for yeah. twenty minutes, and then we get the the ending. That could have just been if the execution is what the ending is all story. The execution is the rest, and it did yeah. a fantastic job on that. I was entertained from beginning to end on this thing, and I love the score. I love that 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 portion of the score rather. It's really creepy and eerie, and it added to that second part where I felt like that tonal change with the whole slasher vibe. That little, little fucker coming out with his knife going, <laughs> <laughs> it turned into Chucky yeah. all of a sudden. Anyway, somebody like off camera threw him at her. She's on the bench. She's like, ah, and like throws. <laughs> I, I like when the knife comes through the door handle, and also you hear yeah. the the famous like. Ee! 
like the music music score <laughs> goes it does that horror thing which i think i always think it's funny when they have like jump scare horror because you gotta imagine like when people were watching this episode in the 60s and stuff like that happens or stuff like the knife coming through the the burlap sack and you can imagine people just going oh, oh my fine. god what just happened this, being scared here here we're just like you know where's the where's the twist where the woman has the the fetus in the back of her head or something like that but you know here <laughs> yeah here you here fingers like, where's the blood <laughs> yeah exactly when i laughed one of these way Martians too hard gonna at that crawl part. up inside of her asshole you know? oh <laughs> or down her throat yeah uh, can you imagine if they had like uh bigging ability like you know sh- not shrinking but like rebigging and they uh rebigging like, <laughs> yeah they exploded her or something like that um so yeah, from the, the yeah. boys we're getting to the boys <laughs> <laughs> or uh alice in wonderland with the with the drink drink me Oof. or whatever but anyways uh with that said uh, final thoughts on like is this would you consider this classic twilight zone or is this just an episode that you really like is a question I have for well, either of you. I'll go. I'll go first. I usually try and let Triff go first. But I'm go for go it. First. Um, I have long said since I've been watching this, no secret, this is my favorite episode. But I also, in the past few weeks at least, have been saying I haven't seen this episode in twenty years. So for all I know, I'll go back and watch it. Obviously, I liked it. Uh, there's no secret. But maybe I won't think of it as highly. Will it still be my number one after watching it? And after watching it, I watched it today. Yeah, up to this point, am I going to sit here and be like, no episode will ever live up to this one? <laughs> no, I don't. I obviously I can't remember them all. We've still got three seasons, three and a half seasons to go, right? Five, yep. Which one should you, yeah, no, two and a half seasons. To, no, three and a half, three and a half and seasons half. to go. That was right. But yeah, up to this point, this is my favorite episode by a, a healthy margin. I I think our number one right now is uh, the Eye of the Beholder. Right. I see Matheson's fingerprints all over both of them with his misdirection and subverting ex- expectations and stuff like that. I One of the things I like so much about that episode and this Well, no, one, I the Beholder is not written by Rod Richard, is it? I thought it was. It's, is it not? It was no, it's too. written by Rod Sterling. Oh, uh, uh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Well, they both have that thing. They And uh, they're not the they're only two. They're both very Lots similar in their writing style. Mm-hmm. They both have, and many, the great Twilight Zone episodes. <clears throat> the one excuse me that stick with us stuff to talk about like when you, you it happens you start wondering about this and that and what does it mean and like all these things we've been talking about and there's more we could keep going about the different meanings to things especially after you know what happens like once we get this reveal all of a sudden things take on different meanings and things like that and why didn't she do this what was this were they really were they trying to hurt her were they just trying to survive was she trying to you know what? What, what all's going on here? Like you said, the whole paranoia thing working in, working into it. While it is a on a basic level, this is a simple episode. There's a lot that you can look into. It makes it even more in, like there's a lot of there's a lot of things that could be going on here. I just thought the execution was fucking fantastic. And yeah, this is my favorite episode so far. I mean, when we get to the the ranking in a minute, yeah, I'm going to say I want this to be number one. But I mean, we'll <laughs> see where you guys end up at it. And I'm not just saying that because I've been saying it all that time because I did go into this very critically. I went into it and I was like, all right, I've been saying this all this time. I've got to like back that up. So I came in and I was like, I hope I like this episode. <laughs> <laughs> and I did. It did not disappoint. This is a great episode from beginning to end. Does it have slower moments? Sure. There's plenty of slow movies out there that are still fantastic. The slower moments served the story. It showed this simple woman doing simple tasks, showing how she has a simple life. And then she is thrust into this world of, in her, from her perspective, is, is like supernatural and terrifying. That's why that music added to it, because it, it is she is terrified of these creatures, these monsters that are invading her, her home. We know, or we find out, that they're just... It's just us. <laughs> you know, it's just technology. <laughs> That's how I felt about it. Nice. So far. We run into a, we, we run into a lot these days of like, you know, tell don't show as compared to show don't tell. And yeah. this is kind of like you could hold this up as like the ultimate expression of show don't tell. You know, mm-hmm. everything that goes on and regarded that's the way it was written. And I don't think you could have gotten anyone better than someone who trained with Marcel Marceau to to pantomime yeah. and to do this justice. And then she actually had to be pursued or um, persuaded to be able to do this. But the fact that she did, I mean, 
I had only ever known her as being unbewitched and such, and to know that she had this depth of talent and to to to, to do this, <laughs> to be first off a one person show for the most part, two to be able to do this, you know, and just you know through natural human you know sounds and utterances. I mean, my God, it's it's from that perspective. If you don't, don't like this episode on any other level, her performance is amazing. Fan fucking fantastic yeah she, and, and you gotta i can say and it's hard this is a hard one to look at when you already know the thing you already know what's going on you look at all the because like knowing that i look at some of her reactions and they're still fantastic but i'm like oh i see there okay i see she's making noises but she's not actually speaking even though she's alone but i'm telling you on a first watch you, you may not i mean nick i know you said you remember not liking it because she wasn't speaking i didn't even notice and maybe I'm one in a million. I don't know. But it did, it's still, even if you noticed that she wasn't speaking, it did seem natural because this person's all alone. And then the rest of the time, she's fighting for her life. And I mean, yeah, in movies, we've come to see people, even when they're alone and they're fighting some big injustice, they're like spouting off one-liners and stuff. Would you really do that? If you were truly alone, like if some little monsters came in here right now, I'd probably just be making noises too. I'm like, ah, ah, because I can't say this. When I had a car accident, when I ran off the road going almost 100 miles an hour, we're not going to talk about it. But when that happened, you see in the movies, people are like, ah, and like saying all this stuff. I didn't do that. I got real quiet. And I went, ah, that's it. I just had like one gasp. And the rest of the time I was real goddamn quiet because I was concentrating on surviving. So it made sense to me why this person was not speaking. And it didn't even, it didn't even come into my mind that she wasn't speaking or that it was unnatural. We, well, and two, do you real, think like, um, sorry, real quick, um, yeah, you think ahead. like, and, oh, and her performance, oh. by the way, what I was trying to, I'm sorry, her performance is one of the things that added to that and made it believable. But I'm sorry, go ahead. No, no, it's still good. I, you know, being that, you know, the whole like <clears throat> quippy MCU kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. If you're going, you know, I, I think of like aliens and things like that, and I can't remember how talkative or not talkative they were. But if you're trying to sneak up on something or sneak away from something, hide, whatever it might be, you're not going to make any unnecessary noises. Look at you. You mentioned alien or aliens, yeah. whichever. I mean, really, both of them. If you look at the end of both of those movies, Ripley, greatest one of if definitely the greatest female or heroines in cinematic history. Oh, yeah. The last scenes when she's walking in aliens, when she's going down to find Newt, Queen. She didn't say a word. She does not say anything. There's lots of breathing, lots of physical performance. She doesn't say anything until she gets to Dude. And then even after that, when she's running for her life, besides the part where she tells her, she goes, come on! And she also says, like, uh, close your eyes, baby. Beyond that, she didn't say shit. They don't say anything because they're trying to survive. In the first movie, when she's running through the Nostromo to set off the... the where she goes back and forth to try and set the bomb off, or the uh, self-destruct off, she... Yells at the computer one time because it's speaking to her. <laughs> and she says, God damn it, mother. <laughs> she <laughs> says that. She says, I, I can't remember the specific. But beyond that, she does not speak. And it seems natural because she's by herself and she's running for her fucking life. Yep. Man, I thought, you know, it was uh, very similar here. Um, no, what I was going to say is, Jacob, you're alluding that I, I didn't like this stuff because I was, thought it was slow. I was talking about when I was younger, when I was watching this. Well, yeah, that, well, that's what I meant. That's what I meant. Yeah, yeah. No, yeah. now now it's like it's a top 10 episode for me. Definitely. We'll talk about where we rank it, but it's oh, wow. definitely a top 10 episode. But <laughs> um, it definitely. Uh, yeah, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> Once again, the simplest things are the most terrifying things. Um, dreams or are, are they're complicated, but they're very simple in their use. That's why Nightmare on Elm Street works as well as it does. A guy in a mask with a some kind of weapon, very simple, very terrifying. Uh, same thing here. Little invaders. You don't know they're you don't know they're human. They don't, you don't know they're from Earth. You just think they're there as creatures of some form that seem to be attacking this woman. But like I said, there's much more depth and layering and you know complicated uh, ideas being presented because it is like i said dealing with misconceptions and fear and you know paranoia and stuff like that so um that's where i kind of land with it it's very very simple but very deep and it's what richard matheson and rod Sterling are going for and represents why the twilight zone is as important and valid in its material even today as it was back in the day because 
as you're aware, we're dealing with these kinds of, you know, misconceptions and paranoia and, you know, fear and all that stuff even today. And this episode is definitely an embodiment of that. So that's why think, that's what I got. Do, do, do either of you, as I watch this, because like I said, the only criticism I can lob at it, and I can't make this a valid criticism because of when it was made was technical. And that was the creatures themselves. There, it, it is what it is. It was the 60s. I, I am not like on this re remake bandwagon where I'm like, remake everything, remake everything. I say usually make new shit. This is one. I would love to see a modern remake of this, but I would be afraid at the same time because they want to change too much. Yeah. If they did everything more or less the same, like with her performance and the setup and all that, I mean, it, it'd look a little bit nicer, but all that, keep that. That was fine, but maybe keep the creatures a little bit shrouded in mystery. And even if you show the ship, but we don't have to necessarily see them and maybe just some better looking little creatures. And maybe just like where they're like, she, you get quick glimpses. It's never enough to focus on and see what it is. And it's running around and they're terrorizing her. I think that would be fantastic. I mean, do you guys think that this would be a good remake? Or like, do you think this is prime for a remake? I'll say that. The remakes are difficult when you're talking like, and I, I know if that the, remade the, well, yeah well, well. <laughs> and, and, and even in that respect and this is this is i don't know so like if you were to remake something like the room it would lose it or any sequels even if you were to try and redo that it loses that charm regardless of how well it's made because it the idea has been done it has that attached to it even though it's 60 years on you know unless you did something different enough with it to make it more work with modern audiences the reason that this worked so well to some extent was Agnes it's Moorhead, the, the, the way that it's shot, you know, and I'm not dissing on that, but like you look at, and I, I, I mean, no disrespect to this, but I haven't seen the 2000 or the, the 2010s version of the twilight zone, but every other version of the twilight zone, although good has never no. matched up to what the original was mm -hmm. because Triv, it, you're not the, wrong. It, like I, I, I sorry sure. to cut you off, but you're not no, wrong. Sorry. I watched, I watched the '80s one probably a year ago, and there's maybe a handful of stories, like maybe ten at the most. I think there's like sixty <laughs> episodes, maybe or something close to there, that are actually worth watching. Otherwise, they're either remakes or just not great. And like I said, when I go back to why this series is so special, is I mean, yes, it takes place in the '60s. Yes, the robots are weird, but the stories are timeless. When people go back and try to read, this has happened in Jordan Peele's version of Twilight Zone. There's nothing special about it it, it doesn't feel mm -hmm. earned nothing feels earned and, and everything here it's this whole episode feels earned and that's what makes it so great that's why Rod Sterling was such a genius I mean his night gallery stuff I don't, I don't know how you guys feel about that but it's just there's something this is what they call the lightning in a bottle type situation where it's just everything about the series has clear messages and they work and they're powerful in their own right. And you get, you don't get that in the other twilight zones. You don't get that with the two thousands, the eighties, nineties, whatever they did. It just doesn't work. So I think, not wrong. I think you guys are right. You don't have to be right, but I think you're right. The, the unfortunate, the unfortunate truth is this: I would like to see this episode remade and done well because i wouldn't want them right. to change what made it original i would want them to improve the things that needed improvement mainly the technical those few technical issues mm -hmm. do everything as practical you know perfect world if i was doing it. doing everything practical use a lot of the same techniques just have better looking creatures and maybe shy away from showing them as much that's yeah. it that's the only thing i would change and find someone who could give that fantastic performance another thing that i think would work with this particular one is this idea really fresh idea and we run into that a lot with Twilight Zone. But what happens is, well, oh, it's a fresh idea. Well, it was a fresh idea in 1960, <laughs> and it's been done to death. I can say that this idea, well, sure, we've seen something similar to it afterwards. It hasn't been done to death. It is a, it's still a relatively originalish story. I think if people were watching this, they wouldn't be able to automatically pick up. There's been lots of Twilight Zone episodes that we've gone back and though it was the original and going back, I'm like, I know what's going to happen because I've seen this a million times since, since this, this may have been the pioneer, but I know what's going to happen because we've seen it so many times since this one does such uh, a good it job. It still works. Realize that's this was, yeah. It still absolutely works. It's misdirection mm. is fantastic. I would still like to see a remake with more, threatening looking creatures <laughs> however i agree with you guys if it did get remade they'd probably fuck it up and lose the magic well i would want to see more 2001 planet of the apes remake and more 2000 
16 or whatever it was planet of the apes remake or 14 oh, no. whatever it was Understood. yeah instead you know do it right but we get a lot less of those remakes than we do of tim burton's planet of the apes you know because that was okay. another remake by the way for the longest i was like man we don't need it but i'd love to see a planet of the apes looks fantastic we don't need it but i'd love to see a remake of planet of the apes with modern technology and then i got it and i was like i was wrong <laughs> <laughs> didn't need that well and, and there's right two sides two decades later but still <laughs> <laughs> well and there's two sides to that you look at like uh the thing or um and then these yeah. are movies as compared to episodes but uh two sure. points here first one is you know you can you can have well done remakes even like um the the uh tales from the crypt no tales from the dark side tales from the crypt the episode that you liked of uh the the chaser mm -hmm. yeah like that That's was a really movie. well done redo within another complete like I think if you took it away from Twilight Zone, had it be done by some other, you know, if it's, you know, whatever, you know, whatever, some like something not under the Twilight Zone name. Sure. Just to like they did with Tales from the Crypt. So so many Twilight Zone episodes have been spoofed with like this scary door thing in Futurama, or you know, they've been parodied to death. I don't think you have that with this episode, so that might make it stand out because mm -hmm. even though it's known, it's not. When when you think Twilight Zone, you think um, you know uh the uh what is it um, time enough at last or you know uh the the kid that can send people into the <clears throat> cornfield or, or whatever it might be, I don't automatically think of this episode and maybe that's just me, but yeah you know it's not one well, of the first. Well, it's not ones so that well up. known, like to serve man. I mean, if you did, why do a remake of that? Everybody knows this is one that I feel like. A lot of people, like Nick had said, it is popular or it's it's well received and people do like it. But I don't feel like most people, if they saw this, they would know what was going to happen. Plus, it's just so well done that you don't it doesn't have those little things, those little uh, uh, tells throughout it that make you say, oh, this is what's going on. No, it's just, it's 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 a, a twist comes out of nowhere. But at the same time, it doesn't because you look back and you're like, oh, <laughs> I see. <laughs> but it's not like a oh as you're going on there's nothing that makes you say oh this could be that it's just that it's it's great misdirection all around i could i could gush about this fucking episode all day but let's let's get into the part that we've all been waiting for or i, I guess no, before uh, we did that i should well, probably well, do well, the well, uh, closing wait 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 wait, 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 wait. um so, no no um yeah in the end i think it, it's a great episode that just like I, I I don't know if it could be. I, I'm kind of I I think I'm kind of with Trip on this. I I think these episodes have a special place, but I don't know if I'd want to see a remake of this because I feel like the way it's presented. If you add in like actual good CGI or something like that, or you add in like good prop effects from like uh, Disney or ILM or some shit like that, I think it loses a nostalgia point. I think it loses its you know whole. You're probably right kind of feel to it it doesn't mean that i wouldn't watch it i just i feel like this is the type of episode that works because of the kind of style that's being presented because you know they'd be adding you know this would be george lucas seeing this shit in a, a new episode they'd be, adding, like, they'd be adding like fucking uh uh job of the hut or some shit as the fucking creatures and maybe that's what we need because you guys are right i know it's one of those things that i love it so much and she i see this one thing some shit there's <laughs> there's that one thing that stands mm -hmm. out due to its technical limitations due to the time that I'm like, man, I wish that thing, I don't hold it against it because of the time, but I wish that thing was better. And I think that's why I'm kind of like, oh, I, I kind of want to see a remake. But then you're right. I don't really want to see a remake. I just want that one thing being better. So what we need to do is we need to get George Lucas on the phone and he can do a special edition of it and just replace the creatures. <laughs> Something looking <laughs> a little bit less... Uh, Michelin if you man. if you're making a documentary walking down the street, he might walk behind you. So I mean, it's always possible. Man, I so. need to get my documentary stuff together and just start <laughs> shooting documentaries everywhere. I think he lives in um, California. It's on the other side of the country. But <laughs> <laughs> anyways, but uh, with that said, uh, I think we all we all agree that this uh, episode sucks. Um, not it's the worst thing we've ever seen. It will definitely be number fifty one by the end. No, I'm just kidding. Um, yeah, no, it's a good episode. <laughs> <laughs> a gun and in black and white yeah this is crazy crazy episode of the twilight zone um anyways jacob uh head us out with the closing narration these are the invaders the tiny beings from the tiny place called earth 
Who would take the giant step across the sky to the question marks that sparkle and beckon from the vastness of the universe, only to be imagined? The invaders who found out that a one-way ticket to the stars beyond has the ultimate price tag. And we have just seen it entered in a, in a ledger that covers all the transactions in the universe. A bill stamped, paid in full, and to be found unfulfilled in the Twilight Zone. Yeah, paid bills unfulfilled and yeah, um, bitch. <laughs> one-way tickets and stamped in the stars and back in in vastness. Good times had by Ross Philly. And as Triff says, the man knows his words. Yeah, so there you go. We have finally uh, completed our uh, review of The Invaders, Season 2, Episode 15. This is a great day and a sad day for Jacob because now he has to move past The Invaders and never talk about it again. I say he talks about it as much as he freaking wants. Uh, I'll say I'll stop talking about it as soon as you stop talking about some monsters on a certain street out there. <laughs> <laughs> See, I don't um, have this problem, so uh, I'm just going to talk about other things. She goes like off how about great malignant 16 millimeter shrine, shrine. Yeah. <laughs> She's gonna talk about you know what? How... Say what you will. I know this is a little bit of a side note. No, I didn't like it malignant. I just uh, I found entertainment in that police station scene. I will say that. Oh, yeah. But not that didn't mean I thought it was good all of a sudden. I just I said know. I know this I'm is giving so out you there. Shit. <laughs> no, but this is so out there that I'm actually being entertained just because it's so fucking out there. That's a that's a discussion for a different day. Um, anyways, let's go ahead and do the uh, last segment of the episode, which is of course always the Twilight Zone list, the greatest ranking list. Um, at least for today, <laughs> until we start getting into arguments about the top ten. Uh, but it, it's a list that we we rank all the Twilight Zone episodes based on you know our feelings and where the episodes play so uh jacob i know you want this at number one i know but i i, I can't do number one that's just because i think i think we're getting in the territory when it comes to number one where it's like trans it like transcends what the twilight zone is i don't think the invaders transcends i think it's a great twilight zone episode but i i would put this up i would put this you know top 10 maybe top five but i can't do number one man i can't do I it i think he said the same thing about by the beholder so challenge accepted <laughs> yeah but i no, but no in all honesty this is no joke i think i the beholder transcends what the twilight zone is i think this is a top five episode of a episode or oh. maybe top 10 whatever you want to look at it of an episode that really shows how good the twilight zone can be that's just how i i'm just this gonna throw one. my dick out there right now about it so throw that dick out there my friend this <laughs> one does not transcend it subverts <laughs> so number All 51 then yeah no, no, oh yeah that's no, a good no. point drew <laughs> it's a verse number 51 <laughs> slow down there uh, turbo no, <laughs> no, 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 in, no in all honesty i would put this above as much as i hate to say it, i put this above nightmares of child and the purple testament maybe stop it will it be depending on how you feel about walking distance i mean we can go top five if if you're really wanting i just i i don't i i just i don't know that's me personally, but in my opinion, it's definitely more above. than one person. It's really the top three. Well, the top two is where I was battling it out at. But I mean, I don't know. Triv's the third. You're the, you're the deciding. Oh God, you don't want to. You don't have to decide on, on a place, but where where are you? Given what he said, given you know where I stand, where are you at? Because number number fifteen. <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, you mean number sixteen? Yeah, we'll do no. number sixteen. Number fifteen. These motherfuckers, they can't give me one goddamn episode of Bugs. They don't bring oh, Jesus. <laughs> Shush. I, I would go, I would go two or three, I think. Do you think it's better so, than walking distance? I think that it does something quite unique for the episodes that we've watched. So okay, let's talk about let's let's go with two or three, and then Nick will get to where you stand on it too. Let's start with two. Monsters would be on Maple Street. These episodes, they're both very similar in their structure. As far as like they start out, they have a problem that is given us, and then we have characters working it out, and then we get to this banger of an ending that makes you look back on everything that happened with a different pair of eyes. Would you guys agree there? I mean, you know, sure. that's basic. That is like stripping them down, basically. Mm -hmm. You know, it's we have people doing things, paranoia is involved, and misunderstandings. And the same spaceship. This is true. Oh, is it? Yeah. Actually, it could be and the same people, same two guys. Same from, yeah. <laughs> yeah, they could be the same two aliens. This is their demise. 
but you know okay so they are very similar in that respect in that regard mm. their structure and everything i guess the question is, is like with those two since they are very similar i think they're both very good episodes i mean we're talking about number two here and then wherever this one falls i think the middle halves are both like for different re- this one was much more like terror this person giving a fantastic physical performance and just carrying it all on her shoulders and monsters was more all these people and the paranoia and more of a crowd mentality thing. I think both of them have they they're on equal footing there because they both have their own uh, pros and cons there, or just really pros, just different pros. But I think that they both are on equal footing there. So then that leaves me with the ending of each one. Which one of these do you think had the more holy shit banger of an ending? The part that makes you look back at everything differently. From that perspective, I, I would have was. to say. I would have to say this one. You mm-hmm. can kick my ass later if you want, but <laughs> genuinely. Uh, uh, yeah. And I'm willing to look at another perspective, but of course I'm looking at my own right now. <laughs> this is this is where it gets really difficult, to be fairly honest. And I'm like rub my eyes because I'm like, God damn it, maybe they're right. Um uh, I love sleep, the monster. Nick. Just go to sleep. We'll handle See, this. Here, here, here's the thing. <laughs> I don't have okay, Jacob has very strong love of this episode. You have an incredibly strong love of the monsters are doing Maple Street. I'm looking at this. I I enjoy these episodes, but I don't have the emotional. Not not that not that you're gonna go. This episode stays number two. Otherwise, I'm chaining myself to a to a you're fence, an and I'm not. Yeah, you're I, an I, impartial I, party. I don't think I don't think I'm un- impartial, but I I'm okay, just as comparatively speaking, relatively speaking, yes. Up unbiased. These two episodes, unbiased. Up these two episodes. I do think that this has a stronger ending. Just what it does, what it does with one person, what Monsters Are Doing Maple Street did with a whole group. But that was the point of that episode. Mm-hmm. It had to, it, you it's needed that group mentality. Exactly. Yeah. And it shows how it, almost like a virus it can run through them. And I thought that was great. Like I said, they both have, I'm not even going to say cons, they have their own cons with a similar structure. It's well, it's I guess I'll just ask. It's kind I'll of weird it. if you no, let me say this. It's kind of weird if you think about it that these two episodes are completely different in nature, but have the exact same idea behind it. The exact same. This is even this the is structure. Why, the, their structure. They they are extremely similar, but the yeah, and they they literally are not the same. They're not the same in any form or fashion. They just have the same yeah. fear situation, the same paranoia and misconception. You know, the idea that That's these. Throughput yeah <laughs> um, um well triv since you are the third party here you're the you're the un uh the unbiased side of these two because these two episodes especially before we even talk about eye of the beholder um which one would you rather watch uh, that's a difficult question um because they're both so good i they are they're both fantastic it, by the way a, anybody the who's thing... listening or watching oh yeah no no absolutely and, the, and i'm not saying it for that reason i'm saying it because i don't know if i could make the choice like I could sit down with either one of these and be entertained multiple times because they both like, even, even if you want to look at it from the perspective of like, you know, modern day perspective, you can look at either one of these episodes and say, this is as relevant now as it was back then. And I know we can say that about a lot of these apps, but especially in 2022, given everything that's gone down, I I think you can see both of these and, and see the relevance of it and go, Oh my God, pertinent, relevant, lot to be learned lot to talk about from these ah fuck um the idea of i, I do think that this. it's odd though speaking of the, on that subject with both of these and this one had they just talked which you know there was barrier of communication but had they just communicated things probably would have worked out very differently in monsters had they just shut the fuck up and not communicated <laughs> things probably would have worked out very differently exactly. same situation two different ways of going about it but anyway from the perspective of performances the fact that this was done with one person emoting on a level of just facial expressions fear and and just human utterances i i kind of gotta go with this i mean it's down to one person and i i don't want to rock the boat with with either one of you guys but i but that's not that's the whole point like i i know you don't want to do that trip but that's the whole point of the list like we're gonna get into these situations where Jacob, like you'll feel something and I'll feel something will be completely different opposite ends. It just, the the question is, or the same thing with Jacob, you know, will be different. Like with this episode, does this episode work as a Twilight Zone episode? Does it 
transcend what twilight zone is and does it is it is it impactful enough to be you know with say somebody doesn't know the twilight zone you're like okay let me show them the invaders or monsters are doing maple street so i i always joke about i the beholder i mean i'm really literally joking because i the beholder is number one i don't i don't really care because that's not the point of the, the this list the point of the list is finding what we think not what somebody else thinks what we think is the cream of the crop of the twilight mm -hmm. zone and you know okay. whether we think trouble templeton is the best or i the beholder is the best i don't care like you know my list is always you know alex said the same thing our lists are going to be completely different and i would have like these episodes here you would have these here jacob would definitely have sure. a weird list of his own you know that type of thing no i'm kidding oh well mine's so, gonna be weird <laughs> <laughs> No, no but I, it, I, like, I agree with I, you. I don't because... have a problem. Like, we're getting into a point where these two episodes are almost identical in their logic and thinking, but which one is the stronger episode? And that's where it becomes more difficult to get into. And, you know, what I like you what think you said, is though, very valid. Yeah. That's I what, like what it's all about. Says, like, we joke. That, that's what it's about. When you think about, when you think about Twilight Zone and Quisitential Twilight Zone and you know what? What is you know invokes Twilight Zone? The thought that, yeah, I the Beholder, Monsters on Do on Maple Street, uh, to serve man. These these are all extremely popular episodes. They're popular for a reason. They're all good episodes. But that's one of the other things I really like about this one. That's why when you told me it was really popular, I was like, really? Because nobody I ever talked to knows what the hell I'm talking about. But I like this one because it is like kind of I don't want to say I guess lesser known, but it's so fucking great. And I I think that I don't know why it's lesser known. I mean, it is popular. That's where I'm kind of like in the middle on it as far as like its popularity goes. It's not as like you say the invaders. I feel like a lot of people, if you say I the Beholder or Monsters Do on Maple Street and you know, Disturbed Man, stuff like that, they you're gonna find more people that are gonna be like, Oh yeah, Twilight Zone. If you say the invaders, I don't feel like you're gonna find as many people that say that. But this is like that hidden gem that's just it is the parasite, that hidden gem, that little indie flick that is just so damn good that maybe i mean parasite you this know, is, a, spe about this it, is yeah. a species of uh of twilight zone episodes oh god it's no. just so good there's <laughs> but it's like so good but hard not many people know about it i mean i guess yeah. people are learning about it now but i do want like even though it's not as well known as some of those other episodes i still think it definitely stands up there with them and while yeah i want this number you ask me in my list it's number one up to this point who knows where for next week what's next week uh petty for your thoughts i yeah, might be like that's the one not. kills it <laughs> <laughs> i might be you never know i can't remember but at, up to this point i'm like yeah this is number one but on the flip side of that there's two other people on this podcast so i'm not gonna like i mean i'm gonna defend my point i'm gonna shoot for it but let, let's just see where where the where the dust settles i guess it sounds like it's up to you true i'd say number two then that's that's where i'm going on this so you think it's better or uh, eye of the beholder is better for me yeah for me that's like quintessential like that is the heart and soul of what the twilight zone is not to say that this one isn't but just the way that they shot it the there is this like we talked about with the monsters and things like that the fact that they are on camera a little bit too long and these are nitpicky details but mm -hmm. I do feel like from the perspective of hiding in plain sight, I think that um, I have the beholder does it better. What about you, Nick? What do you well, think? About he, I mean, you know where I stand. So. He uh, wants to put it at she's number right. 15. But what, I'm saying, yeah. but given what Tripp says, what do you I what? mean, you can't deny the ending. That's kind of where it is. The ending, though, the Masters of Joe on Maple Street has a great kind of overall run through. That ending is a little goofy, to be fairly honest, because it's two guys. I think they have like, but they have like things on top of their heads, like radio antennas or some shit. They're like, it, yeah, it but kind of like the monsters, kind of like the creatures, the, the, the well, the humans, the, the invaders in this one. I don't really give it a lot of flack for that. I thought, I thought monsters had a banger ending. It was like, it oh, wow, it changed everything. Yeah, they got the stereotypical 50s, 60s, early 60s Martians get up going on. I don't hold that against it. That's just because back then it looked normal, you know, so I can't really hold that against it. So I, I don't look at it like that. I just feel like this ending was a little bit more, oh God, <laughs> like holy crap! Right, exactly. And, that's why. And that one was why. more like, oh, I guess that it was more oh, and this one was like, holy shit! I never, oh, like yeah, because that I, I think when all you... the parts just kind of fell into place, and you were like, 
okay, everything makes a lot more sense now. But this one was like everything just like <laughs> crashed in. You're like, holy shit, everything's just different. Well, you know, yeah, you know I think this. Oh, good. No, no, God, God, God. I'm just gonna say so. The ending of the monsters to do on Maple Street. Did you ever read Under the Dome by Stephen King? Uh, I tried to. I didn't. I wasn't a big fan of it. But I, okay. I know what I have not read. Okay, but do you know? It. Okay, so you know? Do you know what how that how it ends? Like the very ending, the thing that causes the dome and does all that stuff. I don't um, know. Was was it the government like in the Simpsons movie? No, no, it wasn't. Okay, so spoilers in advance for this <laughs> for this book. On the off chance, I think if you saw the TV show back then or, you know, whatever, uh, yeah, those that five people awful. that actually probably give a shit about that. But it mm. ends up that in the book, at least, it's caused by um, an alien child fucking around with some stuff that dropped this dome on the on this town and basically caused all this death and destruction. So basically like ants under a microscope can, or under a um, magnifying so glass kind of thing. The so end so of, it's uh, say elsewhere. Men in Black say, 2? Basically, yes. So, yeah, so but, it's Saint elsewhere with the fucking kid who dreamed up all this shit. Basically, but people actually die, um, as compared to you know a, a series of things. But the monsters who do on Maple Street is essentially like you know frat boys going, ha, 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 we cause death and destruction. It's that same kind of a thing, and that's not mm-hmm. bad. I just find it really funny. Yeah, that's, right. that's true. Um, div- and it's not bad. I'm just. Like it is literally like, you know, these guys that just really want to fuck around and find out, you know, that's that's literally what they're trying to do. Well, that's a that's the funny part about monsters or do on Maple Street. If you really think about it, you can kind of see where it's going. You don't see the ending to invaders happening the way it's happening. You you don't think about giganto woman being trying to you know, fend off humans people. Not like even us. just that. I don't think the ending to Monsters are doing Maple Street as is as impactful to the story as uh, Invaders. Mm-hmm. I think it's good, but the paranoia because it's more about it is less dependent on its ending. I will say that, but I mean the ending yeah. is part of is a, one of the parts. It just adds more retrospection, ret- retrospective to that the whole show. This one, the ending changes everything. So I do think it's a, the, not to say this ending's better. It is different. I just feel like this ending is more impactful overall than that one, as far as the the Martian part. For me, I don't know, that's me. But now I'm left with a debate within my own mind. After all yeah. that, do it's I just want to good. accept? Do I want to accept this place, this very good place, or do I want to now debate the eye of the beholder? I can be persuasive, I, honestly, but I need Jacob. to be. <laughs> I, but I'm I have going to, to. I have to. I have to concede. put the debate to rest. There's nothing <laughs> as iconic in the Invaders as what the Eye of the Beholder does. I'm sorry. Like it, it oh. Eye of the Beholder is so iconic and just its idea and its like misperception of you know everything. I think the ending with the reveal of these characters is just there's there's nothing like it. To be fairly honest, yes, I like the monster to do on Maple Street better, but it's like until until like the obsolete man i don't see another episode that is as as impactful as what he does maybe shadow play maybe the silence can you know up there in the top 15 but the obsolete man is the next episode where i'll truly like go this is transformative of what the twilight zone could do and that's what the eye of the beholder does i don't think the invaders does that to that extent that's just my opinion Rewind the no, tape, Kyle, talking... because I'm pretty sure he said that a few minutes ago about another episode. <laughs> uh, but no, I mean, I can, we can you guys about are both we're... master debaters. I am going. I I am a master debater. I am I am going to say I'm happy with number two if that is where we're landing. Because I will not, fight you really on number again. one. I I love this episode, but I will fight you. You're challenging me. I'm challenging you because I have the beholder fires on all like not that this doesn't fire on all cylinders but oh, it does. from the perspective of the overall f- stuff i just i the beholder does it better for me i think i would have a hard time is way better i would have a hard yeah. time debating eye of the beholder versus this either way because i debated for eye of the, eye of the beholder and i think eye of the beholder is a fan fucking tastic episode that not not that monsters is it but i think eye of the beholder is there are a few episodes you have when you mention Twilight Zone that come to mind, and it is definitely one of them. And uh, yeah, I I would have a harder time debating that one, in my opinion. For me, um, that's why I'm like, you know what? 
it's also one of my tops. So I'm cool with that. I can I can live with two if that's where we're landing. I mean, I know you said that, Triv. Nick, you're still kind of uh no, I put it at number two on the list. So point. I was just seeing how you guys were going. So. Okay. Yeah, yeah I made cool. my decision like I 20 will, minutes ago. I will accept number two. You know, it's good to know that Alex doesn't have to beat your ass for this one, too. I, I mean, we can, we can, we can put it down to like number 43. So we can have Jacob getting no, asked. No, no. <laughs> I will not allow it. I Come will on, take, yeah. I will overtake your channel and re edit that sucker to make sure that it's right. And look, we lost Jake now. Nice job, Dick. Yeah. Jacob's now in hiding. He's now hiding from everything. You know what? Fuck this. <laughs> oh, shit. I'm out. <laughs> anyway. I don't love Uranus I anymore. <laughs> I, will, I, will, I will accept number two. Gracious. Oh, you're so gracious. I can't even, man. Because if you're not first, you're last. Hey, you guys are pushing me. I will debate for number one. <laughs> I'm a you're furious not that debater. Good of, you're not that good of a master debater. A challenge? No. <laughs> Just speaking the truth. Because ultimately, uh, you are not the one that can pushing the it, edit. Nick. <laughs> oh, yeah. You'll see this. You at know what? It's, three been, a, it's been a fucking day. Don't push me, <laughs> young man. Okay. Okay. Oh, shit. She brought the young man. You better shut up, Jacob. <laughs> I like I'm the oldest person on here. She's you are. Me. I appreciate that. <laughs> you're welcome. Just for that, I'll allow it. Oh, you're so sweet. Thank you. Uh, Judy. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So with that said, um, we're going to settle it there. The Invaders is now in the books on the list. It's on the list, damn it. Uh, so, yeah, with that said, uh, new number two is The Invaders above my uh, my favorite episode. <laughs> oh, suck it up, Cupcake. <laughs> Um, no, and all, all honestly, it, it, it was a good discussion, so I think it's it's warranted where it's at. So, anyways, with that said, uh, number fifty one, finally out of the top fifty, is of course the trouble with Templeton. Thank God it's out of the top fifty. I can't wait to get out of the top hundred. Number one is still Eye of the Beholder, and um, yeah. So next <laughs> episode is um called Penny for Your Thoughts, which is season two, episode sixteen, directed by James Sheldon, written by George Clayton Johnson. Uh, this stars stars star stars uh, stars Dick York, which you know famous actor. Um, wait, was Dick York was this okay? So we go from one bewitched actor to another bewitched actor. That's kind yep. of funny. So Dick, Dick York, York or, Dick Sergeant, Sergeant York. Oh my God, Sergeant Dick! I think we found a new Twilight Zone episode. Damn, true. It's awesome. <laughs> uh, no, well, that's it, a but, Wayne's yeah. World quote. Hey. We'll, we'll 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 take it. Jacob will allow it. So, um, is it also stars? <laughs> uh, also stars June Dayton, Dan Torben, Hayden Rourke, and Cyril Delavante, Monty, whatever it's called. So we we'll look forward to that next week. Uh, but with that said, that'll do it for our take on season two, episode fifteen, which is the Invaders. Uh, Triv, you have a channel that is awesome, and you do awesome content. And you bring awesomeness to the more awesome than most of people. Uh, so where can they find your content at? Uh, you can find me here on YouTube at Trivial Theater. Uh, <laughs> I occasionally upload. <laughs> it's been really bad lately. I am trying to get back on track eventually. Um, you can also find me on Twitter at Trivial Theater. Jacob, you do almost awesome content. Not me on awesome, just almost awesome. But almost. that also, <laughs> but that almost awesome content can be found where can be found at Jacob Anders Reviews on YouTube, where you can catch the Almost Awesome Show, a show that I host, as does Nick here for most episodes, and it is every Wednesday and Saturday, weekly, at uh, two o'clock Central Time, whatever time that is, wherever you reside. Come by and see the show live, and if you miss the show, then you can check out little bits of the show throughout the week as I release them. And we talk about entertainment, movie news, a little bit of video games here or there every now and then, just to have a good time and talk about the stuff that I'm interested in talking about. Come check that out. And I, I still do movie reviews. Somebody asked me in a comment just today, they said, do you still do movie reviews? <laughs> and I was, yes, I do. I still do them. I do. I don't do as many as I used to, but I still do do them. And I actually have a slew of them coming up that I plan on doing some older movies and some newer. So I'm there still doing that. The name Jacob Anders of reviews still is a thing. So more reviews coming soon, more, uh, almost awesome content 
there you yeah. go yeah yeah definitely definitely check out the, the show that i co-host with them it's pretty awesome and definitely check out all our content including mine which is at movie emporium the when we record this to when this post is like two weeks ago so i i have no idea what i've posted i think i did like don't worry darling or something like that review and a couple other things i'm in transition to move here soon so there's going to be some weird things on my channel for a little while until i get settled with uh, where i'm going but um but yeah movie emporium and also fine. might i might i add that uh, you got your first product promotion I did. Thank you for thank you for uh, mentioning that. I did for the uh, movie palette, which is really cool. Um, they sent me over uh, this. It's like this canvas painting or whatever it has like stripes down the the vertical. But what it is is basically each scene from the movie that you really like is painted with the color, the main focus color. So. I did. I got one for uh, Mission Impossible Fallout, which was my first review. Which I'm still waiting for that fucking sequel. God damn it, motherfucker! Mission Impossible Dead two Reckoning. sequels. Well, I'm just waiting for the one to release because I've put it on my top of the list for like eight years now, and it still hasn't released. So, well, they're um, shooting the second one now, and it just got delayed because of some sheep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we had to talk about that tomorrow. By the way, that's pretty funny. Um, anyways, but yeah, so it's a pretty cool thing that if you want to check out i have a video on my channel Emporium 15 yes 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 uh so with that said uh find out audio feeds on you know anchor and uh itunes and soundcloud and gmail and whatever else we promote in the long run uh give us stars if you like the the audio version which i think we actually sell better on audio than we do on video for some weird reason but i think that's the compression thing uh but definitely definitely check that out if you like the audio versions but anyways (laughs) he's gonna start doing sexy voices uh but for myself triv and jacob we'll see you guys next time in the twilight zone peace out guys goodbye (laughs) so you know this week there's no sexicon words surprisingly there is is there Mm -hmm. what did i miss um let me i I actually put that i put that on it's the second note i have it says we got a new sexicon word and it is Appropriate, highly appropriate. It's funny that you said that because I actually do have that note right here. <laughs> goes across the screen. Goes. Ah, ah. <laughs>